Hi, good morning. My name is Rich and we are Consume Hub and we focus on recruiting, marketing, innovation, sales professionals within the FMCG sector. And this is the FMCG podcast where we talk to the leaders of today and hear their top tips on how you can develop your category strategy, category expertise and also FMCG leadership. We're really excited today to have Joe Wells of uh, Motion Nootropics on the podcast today. And uh, Joe, just very quickly, give us a quick rundown on you and also Motion. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. This is Joe Wellstead here. I'm co-founder of Motion Nutrition, where we help people deal with sleep, stress, and energy. And I'm also a former professional swimmer. Uh, and so I know a lot about dealing with high stress, high pressure environments. And these are things that so many of us are dealing with, whether it's in sports, work, creative lifestyles, entertainment, or anything. So that's really what we're trying to help with that motion is helping people manage stress, have better energy, and sleep better at night. Yeah, oh, brilliant. No, that's great. Um, just, just very quickly on that, um, Joe, you mentioned earlier, what you competed in the Commonwealth Games, is that right? Yeah, I competed for Scotland in the 2014 Commonwealth Games, which were in Glasgow, so that was just oh. phenomenal to be swimming for Scotland. It was really, really incredible. Nice. Yeah, what was your kind of uh, yeah favourite stroke? Maybe, maybe that's the wrong question to ask. I'm not a swimmer, so sorry <laughs> if that sounds ignorant. No worries. Uh, I competed in the 50 metres breaststroke. I got into the final and there were three of us for Scotland out of eight in the final. So it was really exciting. It was a really oh. good crowd. It was just yeah. something that you don't really get very often in swimming. And after years and years of training, 25 hours a week, it was just so cool and special to be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, I can, I can only imagine. I unfortunately, uh, God did not give me the sporty gene. I've got quite a few <laughs> mates that are pretty sporty, and uh, some of them are very, very dedicated. And just the hours they put into their sports, just it's just phenomenal. I, I, and, yeah. and just with just such small windows as well. Uh, we watched the Olympics this year with the kids, and they were they were just blown away with the discipline of the, of the athletes and the stories. And um, it's amazing how. Um, it, it just captures everybody in that moment. But you think, you know, actually it's years and years and years and years yeah. of training just so you can be entertained in that moment. It's, it's immense, it's immense. It's crazy, it's crazy. But that sport, you know, you love it. People love it when they get into it. So that's why, you know, all, all those hours are worth it, even if it is only for a moment. You have to learn to enjoy the hard work too. Did, did you have half an eye on um, nutrition and nootropics back when you were training swimming or was that kind of something that was off your radar? No, absolutely. I was always really interested in it. And that's really where the kind of original idea for motion came mm. about. Um, this is so leading up to 2014, um, you know, sports supplements in general were not as good as they are today. Yeah. And on top of that, there, it was a bit of an odd thing in swimming because swimming with not being a super professional sport in the UK didn't have um, I had great support in terms of, uh, you know, sports performance psychology and, and swimming coaching and strength and conditioning coaching and physiotherapy and this kind of thing. But when it came to nutrition, it tended to be a bit more on the sort of generic side and, you know, make sure you're getting enough carbs and make sure you're eating, you know, so many times in a day and hydrating enough, which was all fine, but it seemed quite basic to me. And so that kind of triggered me to do a lot of my own research um, into essentially just fueling better so that I could recover quicker and come back stronger the next day. Because in, uh, in elite sport, you're always looking for just marginal incremental gains. And really what, it com what that comes down to is being able to turn up every day and train hard. And if you're still re recovering from the previous day, then mm, that's not going to be optimal. Uh, and, and then over the years, I kind of realized that well, whether that's in sports or, or anything else, that really applies to all of us, you know, where yeah. whether it's just purely mental load and high stress that we're dealing with or physical strain, we're all kind of going quite hard through the day and then expecting to be able to flick the switch off and go to sleep and recover well at night and then wake up feeling refreshed in the morning, ready to go. And it doesn't really tend to happen like that. So yeah. that's where I think, you know, we can come in and help people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting um, you mentioned sleep there because one of the things that I've been aware of in the conversation around nutrition the last few years is, is a renewed focus on sleep and uh, people are calling that the, the, the third pillar, aren't they, of diet now, which is quite interesting. 
Um, and and I, even just a few years ago, it felt like that wasn't on people's radar, but people seem to be, excuse the pun, waking up to the power of sleep. Um, and, and I noticed there's a big focus on that in your product range as well. Did, did you find that in the past stress would affect your sleep and there was just kind of this negative cycle that would kick in or was that something that you were sort of trained and conditioned to deal with? It's a huge factor. And I mean, it's um it's something that's actually quite hard to talk about in sports, especially because yeah. if you're if you're in a very kind of alpha environment, the expectation is that you can deal with the pressure and yeah, you know yeah, get yeah. really good sleep. But that's not really how it happens for and, and we're all the same. We have high stress and that gets in the way of things. But also it's not just mental stress, it's also if you're expected to compete or train at a very high level late into the evening that's going to have all kinds of physiological effects and you're going to be on a, on a high of, you know, those sort of the, the runner's high that people are familiar to, yeah. you know, the endorphins post-workout that's going to sort of carry through into the evening. And of course, if you come out of the pool at eight or 9 PM, you're not going to be able to sleep by 10, you know, you're going to be yeah. kind of like on a high for quite a long time. So then being able to get up early and go again in the next, the next day is really difficult. Uh, yeah. And so that, that's, that's a pattern that replicates itself across all of our lifestyles, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's not somebody who's swimming or doing any kind of sports, but if you're thinking of how much we, um, you know, stimulate ourselves and our, our brain right up until the evening, whether it's uh, on our phones or watching the news or, or, or just speaking to somebody about a particularly sensitive topic, or, or even, you know, we talk about reading as being a good alternative, but if you're reading a book that's kind of work related or self-help related oh, yeah. or kind of triggering in any way then that's going to have exactly the same impact even if you're not getting the blue light from a screen you're still getting something that's triggering and and kind of uh yeah stimulating you so that's going to carry on you know later on into the night and, and it's not going to be very optimal for sleep yeah yeah that, that's yeah I am um, had a bad bout uh, with my mental health sort of five six years ago. Young, we had a family that was really young, and um, the the thing that made the biggest difference to me getting better was just getting my sleep sorted. Um, mm -hmm. But I'd got into this really bad habit of every night I'd just kind of be cruising through Facebook, Instagram, reading blogs, reading self help books. I was reading until like one o'clock in the morning quite often, and because I was in my mid twenties, I could probably go three, four, five days on four or five hours sleep and, and kind of get away with it. And then at the weekend, I'd have this almighty come down, being right mad with the kids and the missus. And it was just awful for about six months. And then our friend Liz, she, she's a mental health specialist. She said, I think you need to look at your sleep, Rich. And she was like, just, I don't understand why your generation are obsessed with um, knowing what everyone else is up to. She's like, why don't you just read a book before you go to bed? And not, not some like mad thriller. She's like, you know, read something yeah. like, like, you know, an Enid Blyton book with your kids, something really, really like, you know, just low key. And um, that kind of little simple hack just made a massive difference. But, but since then, that, that's kind of what got me into nutrition. And I've, um, yeah, I'm always testing out new products. But um, what that was kind of my, like my, my kind of aha moment for thinking, I need to take mm. it seriously. What was your kind of like light bulb moment when you think thought, right, um, I, I'm into it. I, I know swimming, but actually I'm going to take this from something that's a, a, a passion into a, a business concept. Uh, well, when it comes to sleep and energy from the product perspective, um, in sports and also just in regular life, it tend, what we tend to do is go for stimulants like caffeine in the morning and then uh, sleeping pills in the evening. And so that didn't seem like a very uh, helpful kind of idea as, as the, the go-to solution for everybody. And, it, and yet it still is the go-to sol solution for everybody. Uh, so that from a product perspective, that's where we thought, well, this isn't quite right. Um, but then from actually getting things started uh, in 2015, after after quitting swimming, my co-founder and I were working in sports management and we pretty much had this exact conversation, you know, that, well, if I went through that as an elite athlete thinking supplements are not very good and not very good for me and, and you know, I'm eating all these healthy me meals, so why should I be taking supplements that are clearly not very good and you know what else can I do to help my sort of overall holistic health uh, health so that I can get good rest and have better energy through the day and it was clear at that time that there was a growing appetite for nutrition uh, outside of meals so for supplementation and it started from sports and going into sort of more mainstream and then it started kind of expanding from that into yeah, dealing with stress and, and energy and sleep and we kind of looked at this and thought well clearly there's an appetite for it there's a growing market and demand for it and yet the products are really not 
responding yet. Uh, and the only thing that was happening at that point was um, maybe uh, brands would kind of offer the same product, but in a different kind of packaging or in a different kind of format, but really, or, you know, with different colorways. <laughs> and it was just yeah. very, very basic. And as soon as you kind of scratch the surface of what they were doing differently, you realized it was just another probably whey protein with probably sucralose and probably some artificial flavorings. And that seemed to be like the solution for everything. You just label it differently. And that seemed quite disappointing. Not, not that whey protein is a bad product at all, but just that it didn't, there wasn't much exciting innovation. I think that that's the big thing. And yet there was so much more demand for products. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. And, and, and um, what, what um, are new tropics for those that aren't familiar with the category and it's something that I'm still not <laughs> I don't got to grips with what that means because it seems to be a bit of a catch-all for lots of different things. Mm -hmm. like, how would you define nootropics and what it also within that? Is there a difference between nutritional products like a, you know, sort of the stuff you buy from Holland Barrett that's, you know, like a little multivit versus a nootropic? Can you just kind of unpack mm -hmm. that for us? Yeah, well, it's it's quite telling that you haven't wrapped your head around it, even though you're kind of in the industry. I think the problem with the word nootropic is that um, it's been taken and shredded apart by different parties that have their own incentives and their own kind of goals. The way we define it is very simple. A nootropic is anything that affects how your brain works. So caffeine is a nootropic, um, methamphetamine, methamphetamine drugs are nootropics, uh, you know, and so that means you have a whole range of products that affect how, you know, have, affect your mood and your mental energy and mental performance and your ability to focus or to be completely lethargic and, and dreaming, you know, daydreaming. So that's quite a wide definition. And what's happened is that uh, up until 2015, the media's definition of nootropic was purely methamphetamine drugs or, you know, kind of study aids and this kind of thing. And then supplements kind of grew in, in presence uh, and, and the supplement kind of definition shifted from that to being you know, sub, uh, nootropic is something that's helpful. It's going to help you focus. Mm -hmm. And then a kind of new, new wave of supplements came along that said, we're brain supplements, but we're not nootropics. <laughs> so all of these kind of the, uh, diverging definitions were extremely unhelpful, unhelpful, I think, because if we're trying to create a category, what really we should be doing is all saying in the background, let's agree on one definition. And, and to me, it's quite simple. A nootropic affects how your brain works. And if we could all do that, then a lot, a lot more people would be comfortable with the word nootropic. And you'd, you'd understand that there are good nootropics and bad nootropics, just like there are, you know, good ways of, of hydrating and alcohol is a drink but it's not going to hydrate you no. you know what i mean so <laughs> if we could just agree on that it would be extremely helpful but because of different parties incentives um you know media has uh, clickbait incentives and brands have their own kind of marketing incentives and everybody's playing off each other uh, it's it's led to a huge amount of confusion and i wish we could move beyond this yeah okay that's really interesting um, no, thanks. Thanks. That's, that's that's the first time I've heard it unpack that succinctly. So that's that's really helpful for me. Um, so within that, then, like, what does Motion Nootropics offer that's different from some of the uh, other emerging players? I follow a, a number of Nootropic brands at the moment that uh, I'm interested in that um, all have slightly different angles. But what makes you guys unique? So the way that uh, Nootropic supplements have grown is. Um, typically extremely alpha, um, you know, probably the first product that was quite, quite, quite successful in this space was on its product called alpha brain. And, and that kind of, to me, defines that whole space, you know, the brand is called on it and the product is called alpha brain. This is very, very macho alpha male type product. And almost all the products in the category play that same card. Uh, and there's clearly a space for it you know there's clearly an appetite for it but what we've done is said um we're not going to play that alpha bro card what we're going to do is focus on the emotions and how we can help people deal with real life problems mm. so that's why we don't actually talk about nootropics as such we talk about sleep stress and energy okay. and everybody almost everybody has got some issues with sleep almost everybody has got some issues with stress and almost everybody wants more energy so suddenly yeah. it's a much more attractive proposition and a much easier way to start a conversation with people rather than starting with something that's extremely alpha kind of bro type product and with a word like nootropic that is so fraught with you know confusion. Okay, that's, that's fascinating, right? Okay, um, that's good category management as well, you know, speaking <laughs> to consumer needs, not, not yeah. just to, uh, yeah, what one particular persona. Um, so, so kind of, 
building on that then, um, where do, um, I mean, you kind of alluded to this already, but where would say a new um, emotion product sit between a traditional supplement that you buy in Holland and Barrett, where maybe it's a, it's a chamomile related product that is going to help you sleep or it's, you know, it's got fish oils and it's going to help you brain energy versus that um, instant hit you want from an energy drink. I, I don't know if I'm phrasing the question right, but I'm thinking like in terms of that need, say if, I, if I'm taking a supplement, I might be thinking like long term, I just want to keep my vitamin D high and not get poorly, not get COVID mm-hmm. type of thing. Or, or, but if I'm having that energy drink, I want to I want to like hit it now because I'm, I'm having a slump. Where does sort of like a motion product fit in that sort of rhythm of needs in, in your life as a consumer? Well, first of all, our products are in Holland and Barrett, so that is a very real question. Um, and I think that uh, there's clearly a big education piece here, that you know, that, and that's our job, is to help people understand how our products will help them. And we're very vocal in that, in that sense that um, we're not a quick fix. You know, we're not an overnight solution. We're not going to transform your life, your life overnight because that's not how real change happens. Right. Uh, and I think that by being upfront with that, um, people kind of respect it and, and they, they will understand it. And if they don't, then they're probably not the right consumer for us. So I think, you know, when we talk about um, segmenting and category management and selling to the right person, uh, being quite clear about how our products work and who they might benefit is helpful because at least we're not wasting anybody's time and, uh, you know, we're not wasting our time trying to sell to the wrong people. So we're yeah. quite honest with this. Um, if you're looking for something that's going to knock you out, then don't buy Unplug from Motion Nutrition. If you're looking for something that's going to give you 400 milligrams of caffeine, don't buy Power Up from Motion Nutrition. You know, uh, if you're looking for something that is um, a CBD type product where you think you might get a kind of fake high, then don't buy Hormone Balance from Motion Nutrition. These are, these are not, we're not looking to mask symptoms. We're looking to improve your long-term uh, health and your, and your, you know, your long-term um, ability to, for example, get great sleep so that every single day you can look forward to getting a great sleep tonight. And you know that you'll wake up refreshed tomorrow rather than yeah. thinking, oh my God, I'm so knackered. I need to take a sleeping pill because I need to get like 12 hours sleep tonight. That's not helpful. Okay. So it's like, I guess these, as solutions, these embrace a, a consumer that's that's keen to kind of step change their lifestyle rather than just uh, kind of plug a particular energy low on, on a Tuesday yeah. morning. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's, that's really interesting. Yeah. I mean, I know that, that, all your marketing as well. Like on your website, you've got this amazing uh, infographic showing where you get on, you know, day day seven through to day forty five through to day ninety in that journey with um, the, the different products that you have. And I thought that was really powerful actually because it's the first time I've seen that from um a supplement brand kind of explain where you would be at if you commit to the product and commit to that kind of step change in your own life mm-hmm. and taking con- it felt like it was kind of fueling me to take control of my own health rather than just put a sticking plaster on a problem for today you know which i really liked yeah. that's a big part of what we're trying to get across is um not just that we have solutions to help you but also that uh we can put you in control so we're not asking you to do a thousand different things and follow a 57 step protocol. We're just saying, try this in the morning, try this in the evening, do it for four, eight, 12, 16 weeks. And you're probably going to get some really good change. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, could just following on from that, like, and this is a, a bit of a question on the fly. So I've been experimenting recently with coming off caffeine during the week and using uh, different nootropic products, which is actually really helped me avoid an afternoon slump um at the weekend i i still have a coffee i still have beer as like as someone that's performed at very high level as an athlete do you think those kind of like at weekend indulgences can they have a big knock-on effect on a monday and a tuesday or are you kind of fairly comfortable with people sort of having that kind of rhythm of you know behaving in the week and some treats at the weekend kind of i don't know what what, what, what would your advice just be to me like me that's trying to get their head around all that sort of stuff uh, you know, it all depends on how much you're talking. I mean, the, the flip side also is that uh, if I were to spend a really long time off caffeine, um, then, you know, your sensitivity is heightened. Uh, and so, so for me, anyway, I know that if I didn't have any coffee for a really long time and then I had just one espresso, I probably would sleep terribly that night. Yeah. Uh, it would be it would really, really affect me. So I like to have 
you know, one cup or one and a half cups every morning. And, and I know that, that works really well for me. Um, and I, I, I kind of have the same kind of view with alcohol. I, I drink very little, but um, I won't stop myself if, you know, if the time is right and I'm going to enjoy it. But uh, I know that if I have a lot on a Sunday night, yeah, I'm going to feel awful on Monday. So I, I think I think there's no like answer that suits everybody. I think it's about finding, you know, the right the right mix that works for you and not not worrying too much about it. I think it, it, we get so ingrained in this stuff and, and we kind of get really far too deep, I think, in, in you know, finding exactly what works best. And then that creates a huge amount of stress. That's, that's one of the reasons why I'm really cautious about things like wearables, because you're suddenly tracking so much data, having to make yeah. so many decisions every single day and worrying about how this and that affects you but you're kind of forgetting about, well, maybe actually drinking a couple of beers on a Friday night or Sunday night, even if that's what it takes for you to have a you know deep and meaningful conversation with your pal, then the benefit is probably greater than you know having a bit of a headache on Monday morning. You know, and I'm talking pure health benefit here. I'm talking like you know mental mental health and um, you know kind of lifting a weight off your shoulders, and probably by the Tuesday you're going to feel so much better regardless. So I think we need to kind of take that bigger picture into account rather than just the immediate effect of, you know, is this going to make me recover better tonight? Am I going to be in the green tomorrow morning? Or you know, That's too simplistic. That's really interesting. Yeah, and again, I guess it's a holistic approach that, that fits with the brand. Um, I, I always wanted to kind of dip into some of the products themselves and just talk about what's, what's actually in them because I, I was looking at the ingredient deck and there's some um, fantastic named products in there i think one of them is uh is it in power you've got lion's mane mushroom is that right mm -hmm. yeah it, yeah what, what well what what is lion's mane mushroom start off with that and kind of what was the benefit so there's there's about 17 active ingredients yeah. in power up and um you know some, some people could look at that and think that's too much and i know i i've heard a lot of um kind of criticism in general that if you look at an ingredients list and it's too long then you're probably not getting the benefits but uh, actually our products have all been form formulated by uh, our chief scientist who's miguel turbio mateas who's a world-leading neuroscientist and these have been very very carefully formulated to have um the correct dosage of different different active ingredients mm. and so in power up you have a mix of um amino acids uh a lot of uh, high level B vitamins and they tend to be methylated B vitamins, which is essentially pre-digested so that you can actually absorb them and use them. Uh, and then you have some botanical extracts like lion's mane mushroom extract. And the idea with all these is that we give you actual fuel power for your brain, not just a stimulant. So there's no caffeine in power up. Uh, so we're giving you actual energy that your brain will use, but we're also helping with things like things that are called adaptogens so that basically means that you're not just going to have more energy but you're also going to be able to work better under stressful situations um and uh lion's mane mushroom is one of those it's there to help with essentially kind of feeling a little bit more in control so if you know in if this afternoon you have to go on stage in front of 300 people and you've taken power up this morning and you've done so for the last few weeks and it's kind of had time to buffer to buffer into your system then the idea is that you will not just have more energy and more focus, but also feel more calm and more in control. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. Um, and then on on balance, um, this is something that really intrigued me because I've seen a lot of um, nootropics out there that will be focused on energy or maybe sleep, um, but hormone balance isn't something that I've come across before. Just tell me a bit more about that product. I, I imagine it'll be quite a new concept to quite a few people that are watching this. Yeah, we, we launched Hormone Balance in, uh, in the new year of this year. And uh, the idea is, is pretty simple. Uh, it, I think we're pretty much in a stress epidemic. Uh, we're dealing with so much information, um, so much stimulation, so many deadlines, so much time in front of a screen, uh, and not enough time kind of in nature or communicating in, in person with friends and kind of not enough uh, restorative downtime and what that does is it burns it means that your your system is burning through a lot more uh the kind of uh, stress management nutrients than uh, perhaps we would have in the past uh, and one of them for example is magnesium we're, we're using way 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 more magnesium than we would have in the past um 
and we're not getting enough from a diet. And so one of the things we do with hormone balance is give three different forms of magnesium at a quite a high dose, but three different forms so that we can make sure that you're actually, uh, you know, using these and your, and your body is absorbing them and making good use of them. Uh, and that will be the first thing to have effect uh, with hormone balance, because most of us, if we're not some supplementing in one form or another, are probably deficient in magnesium. So that's going to have an immediate impact, actually, in, in kind of probably helping you cal like calm calm in the evening and then actually probably also help you sleep uh, but generally generally just feel more relaxed and and sort of decrease uh your peaks of cortisol which tends to be in, in the morning you know, and, and then we tend to add caffeine so we tend to have like a really high peak of cortisol in the morning so one of the things we do with hormone balance is kind of help even those things off so that you kind of feel more calm and more at an even keel all through the day. Okay, right. Yeah, that's really interesting. Um, I get just a, again, this might be a completely ignorant question from a punter like me, but um, so magnesium as a, as a, you know um, a, a, a mineral, could, is it possible to OD on it? You, you know, some some say if somebody is already taking, I don't know, like a multi bit, is it possible to have too much of this stuff? If they come, do, do people need to be aware of that, or is that something that doesn't tend to be a risk? What, what what's your view on that? Um, it's a good question, but with magnesium, there's a, a, an extremely low risk. It's ex extremely unlikely, not just because um, it would be quite hard to, to, to take that much, um, but actually, uh, if you look at the way uh, any any kind of supplement is is made, magnesium is um, is quite a bulky ingredient, um, yeah. and this is why brands will will tend to, to use magnesium oxide quite a lot because there's a higher potency of magnesium in in the magnesium you know elemental magnesium inside of magnesium oxide, um, but it's not a very absorbable form of magnesium. So you, although you're getting more of it, your body's not really going to use it. Um, and the more absorbable forms, uh, like magnesium citrate, for example. Um, there is a smaller potency. So if you took 100 milligrams of magnesium citrate, you're probably only getting 20 milligrams of elemental magnesium. So with that in mind, there is a, a limit to how much you can fit inside of a capsule or inside of um, a, jelly, a jelly bean or, or yeah. however you're taking your supplements. So it, unless you're... Um, sorry, unless you're um, having dozens and dozens and dozens of magnesium capsules every day yeah. <laughs> you're probably <laughs> Im impossible to od on magnesium okay that's good to know so guys if you're listening unless you're capsule binging you should be okay you yeah, yeah. The i mean you, you you need to be <laughs> munching on them all day yeah okay it's <laughs> been the haribo um so so just uh, i mean this has been fascinating for me I mean, one thing that i wanted to do is just kind of um flag where you guys are available in the high street retail online for our listeners and, and the, the guys that watch us on youtube um it's right isn't it? you, you mentioned you've got um listings in holland and barrett and where else can, can people find you on the high street uh we, you can find us in holland barrett you can find us in most of the large boot stores uh you can find us also in Superdrug. and if you're in or around london my favorite place is planet organic they've listed us right yeah. since we launched in 2016 fantastic store and you'll find a whole range there uh, otherwise, of course, you can go to motionnutrition.com. And if you're an Amazon Prime customer and you love to do everything on Amazon, then you can also buy our products on Amazon. Yeah, yeah. I am unfortunately that lazy bloke that orders everything online. <laughs> That's all right. You know, no, I am trying this... to put an order in later on your website. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, this is where um, I always say our job is to not add layers of stress and, and make things yeah. really simple so that you can feel in control without having to go through hoops and do all these different, you know, 57 different tasks to kind of complete the product. If you like to buy from Amazon, then, you know, as a brand that promises to help you manage your stress levels, then, and, and you know, manage your time, then you should be able to buy our products from Amazon. And I think that if, if you know, you'll, you'll speak to brands that are more exclusive than this and will make themselves perhaps only available on their own website other than perhaps Harrods or something like this uh, and fantastic but um, you're probably lying to yourself if that's your approach and you really want to help people deal with stress and help their lives be easier then you're you're adding hurdles <laughs> so, so I, I, th I think it wouldn't it, it wouldn't be fair it wouldn't it wouldn't be fair from us if we said you could only buy from this place or that place yeah very true very true um 
and and you guys have had some fantastic PR. Like I had to look at some of the little pieces in GQ Men's Health. Um, you know, have you found broadly speaking, there's been a a, a good reception, or kind of a good ongoing reception interest in the in the in the product from the media? Like, are there any other kind of um, kind of big media drops you can give us hints at, or is that all kind of under wraps for for now? Generally, really, really receptive, um, especially because when we launched uh, our products, uh, especially PowerUp and Unplug, we launched them in early 2018, uh, and there was really nothing on the market like this, um, let alone in the UK, but even across the world, uh, nootropics that promise to help with daytime and nighttime, not just those, that kind of alpha bro stimulant, you know, will help you get more done through the day kind of thing, but actually help you manage things better during the day, but also sleep better at night as a nootropic. That was really, really new. So we, we've had, we've been grateful and, and kind of lucky to get a huge amount of positive press from that. Uh, we won the Men's Health Best Nootropic Award in 2019 and 2020. Right. And that's actually an award that they didn't have before we launched our products. So I, I personally presented uh, Power Open Unplug to Men's Health in 2018, and they said we love it. We'll, you know, we'll give you some coverage, but you know, it might take a bit of time. And exactly a year later, in, in their in their next um, supplements award, you know, annual awards, they actually created the the nootropic right. award, which they had, they didn't have before. So that that's been really really awesome for sure. Yeah, yeah, I love that. Um, well, where's next for the brand then? Where's it, where, where do you where do you see the brand going? Are there any other kind of key trends in uh, you know nutrition and and lifestyle support that you think ah yeah we'd like to kind of su- support um, everyday people in that? There's always trends. There's always things that you know we'd love to do, and there's always new ideas. But uh, I think right now we need to stay focused on you know helping people deal with stress, sleep, and energy is a lot. Uh, and, and we want to do this really well. And so um, supplements is, is one step, but perhaps there's other areas that we can help people with managing, uh, you know, focus and managing switching off in the evening. Uh, and that's more interesting to me right now uh, to kind of create better impact in that space rather than go off on different tangents and start talking about immunity or, or gut health or, or things like this. There are people who do immunity very well, and that's great. But uh, we, we think that, to have the biggest impact for the most people dealing with stress, sleep, and energy is going to have the biggest downstream benefits for mm. the most people. So if you're sleeping well, if you're not too stressed and you have, if you have a high energy, you're probably going to have a good immune system. Yeah. So we like to kind of take a top-down approach of going, what can we provide that's going to have the biggest impact for the most people? And, and that's what we're focusing on. Okay. Now that's, that's, uh, that's great. So Stress, sleep, energy. That's I'm remembering that. That's a way to kind of hang hang the uh, the, the hat there. Um, oh, I mean, I'm sure people have really enjoyed this and they want to go and try the products. Um, we talked about where you guys are available. Where can people follow you in terms of social and um, kind of is there any content you guys have produced recently direct people towards that's interesting for them? Yeah, you can follow me at, at Joe Wellstead on all platforms and you can follow us at Motion Nutrition. And if you'd like to find out your sleep score out of 100, uh, there's a, a quick quiz that takes a couple of minutes. Uh, it's at sleep.motionnutrition.com uh, and you'll find out your sleep score out of 100 and also you'll receive personalized tips on improving your sleep, which is not just going to be about our products, but actually about holistic lifestyle improvements that are you know, easy and hands-on to, to, to do. Great. Oh, that sounds great. I'm going to uh, do that later to the team, I think. Um, awesome. But no, Joe, thank you so much for today. This has been absolutely uh, just unbelievably enjoyable for myself. It's a category I'm really interested in. And uh, yeah, I, I kind of got this morning and had some stuff before I went to the gym and I was thinking about this, looking forward to it. So it's just kind of, yeah, <laughs> loads of learnings for me. I hope it has been for the listeners as well. Um, we'll be following you. And uh, guys, if you've enjoyed this, make sure to reach out to, to Joe and the team at Motion. I thank them for their time and their content. And more importantly, go and try the products and go follow them on social. Take care. See you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching the video guys, check out the playlist here for more content like this, click the donuts to subscribe so you never miss an update, and give us a like and a comment so we know what content you'd like to see from us. See you next time.